Welcome to the vCenter Server Appliance Feature Demonstration. In this video, we will demonstrate how to migrate a Windows vCenter Server 6.0 with an external platform services controller to the vCenter Server Appliance 6.7. We begin by looking at the migration workflow. We've already completed the migration of the external platform services controller. We've also run the Migration Assistant on the external vSphere Update Manager server. This demo will focus on the external Windows vCenter server migration process, highlighted in steps 4 through 6. Start by mounting the vCenter server appliance 6.7 ISO to the Windows vCenter server and proceed to the Migration Assistant directory. Launch the Migration Assistant application and provide the vSphere single sign-on credentials. The Migration Assistant serves two purposes. The first is to run pre-checks on the Windows vCenter server being migrated to ensure it meets all the requirements. During the pre-checks, the Migration Assistant provides useful information about the vCenter server being migrated, such as warnings, deployment size, and migration steps. Once completed, the Migration Assistant will show a Waiting for Migration to Start message at the bottom of the screen. The second purpose is to copy the data from the source Windows vCenter server to the destination vCenter server appliance. The Migration Assistant will remain running until the source Windows vCenter server is automatically powered off. Now, a machine on a routable network to the Windows vCenter server is required. This is where the migration tool will be run. We start by mounting the same vCenter server appliance 6.7 ISO used in the previous step. This time, Go to the VCSA UI installer directory and launch the installer application. From the vCenter server appliance installer, select Migrate. Go through the migration wizard, which is a two-stage process. Stage 1 will deploy the vCenter server appliance. During this stage, information about the source Windows vCenter server will be entered. followed by information about the vCenter server appliance that is being deployed. A temporary IP address is needed to deploy the vCenter server appliance. Once completed, the wizard will start the vCenter server appliance deployment and power on. After Stage 1 is completed, we begin with Stage 2. Stage 2 will take care of the configuration of the vCenter server appliance. During this stage, if there are any warnings, a screen will appear listing them, allowing time to remediate, if needed, before continuing with the migration process. Since the source Windows vCenter server was joined to Active Directory, we are prompted to enter credentials that have rights to join the machine account and update the vCenter server Active Directory machine account. vCenter Server Appliance 6.7 has the ability to select how historical and performance data is imported. The default configuration option will copy only the configuration and inventory of the source Windows vCenter server. Selecting one of the options for either Events and Tasks or Events, Tasks, and Performance data will provide a more granular option for data import. We are introduced with the option to import data in the background after the vCenter server appliance has been deployed and configured. We can also import all the historical and performance data during the vCenter server appliance configuration and wait until it is completed. Keep in mind, the estimated downtime will vary based on historical and performance data size in your environment. In this example, we have decided to import the events and tasks after the deployment of the vCenter server appliance. Once the data import selection is made, the final step is to verify all the information and that a backup of the source Windows vCenter server has been taken. Stage 2 will now start the configuration of the vCenter server appliance and import the default configuration and inventory. The migration has now completed successfully. We are now logging in the VMware Appliance Management on port 5480. Here, we can monitor the import of historical and performance data. There is an option to pause and resume at any time during the data import. We can now log into the vSphere client and see our configuration and inventory has all been migrated. We can continue tasks while data is being imported in the background. This concludes this video on how to migrate a Windows vCenter Server 6.0 to the vCenter Server Appliance 6.7.
Thank you.